Oh, hey Sparkles, what's up? So in today's video, I'm going to be working on a doll that I have never worked on so far. But before we start, please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment for the algorithm. I appreciate it so, so much. All right, so remember the year 2005? Kelly Clarkson's Since You've Been Gone and Gwen Stefani's iconic Hollaback Girl. Yeah, exactly, that year. This was also the year in which Bratz dolls released their live and concert Space Angel dolls. As someone who never owned a Bratz doll back in the day, I was super stoked when my friend Etelan reached out to me and asked me if we want to do a collab and a revamp on exactly those dolls. The idea is basically to style them like we would have back in the day if we would have been the designers. To start off this project, I was able to buy this original Dana Space Angel doll from 2005 off eBay. As you can see, the doll has definitely seen better days and it's not a collector's piece at all. I'm really in love with her color palette though and would like to make her revamp based on her original appearance, so I will be mainly using purple, white and silver. Alright, preparation time! In order to be able to work on this doll, we first have to get rid of those old clothes. Shoes on red dolls are very funnily full-on leg pieces you can remove. I don't exactly know why I moved her arms here like that though, but the next step is to remove her factory face with pure acetone. You can also use nail polish remover for this, but I find acetone a little more effective. Alright, I kind of really want to keep those hair colors, but the hair is in such a bad condition that I decided to chop it all off and give her nice and fresh new doll hair later. I also really don't like those bangs either. I tried to cut it as close to the scalp as possible before removing the head from the body and the rest of the hair. And here's the big surprise! I'm going to give her a more articulated body. Blue Pixie actually tried out a new jointing technique on this one and sculpted it according to the original measurements. I just finished printing it on my 3D resin printer. The joints basically function like monster high joints and her legs for example can now bend like this. Isn't this fantastic? To put them together, I insert the joint disc into the fitting body parts like this. And here's the assembled new body. It looks really nice and I'm happy that this non-stringing technique worked out so well. Okie dokie, let's start the outfit. First I'm going to make Dana a skirt from this incredibly glittery fabric. <laughs> it's so so pretty. It is a little bit thick to sew on such a scale, so I will be making a one pattern piece skirt. I simply cut it out like this first. Then I take these yarn wefts I prepared and will now glue them all the way around the bottom seam like this first. When that was done, I flipped the piece over and now glue on more wefts on top of the fabric like this and flip them over for a clean finish. To make the bottom seem floofier, I add some loose yarn in between those two wefts. I then just fold the remaining pieces over and cut them to the desired length. Looks good! Now I will just need to add some small accessories like a belt and belt loops and finish it up with a closure. I'm really happy how this little glittery skirt turned out and it was completely without sewing, that's so cool! For Dana's top, I cut these pieces from silver metallic jersey and will now glue around pretty much all the seam allowances first. When this was done, I sewed together the side seams already and will now connect both pieces in the front with this little metal ring. I thread it through like this and glue it in place. With a closure, we have a very cute early 2000s crop top. I really love how shiny the metallic fabric looks. How about we give Dana a fluffy white jacket? For that, I just cut out the bodice 
and sleeves out of a fluffy pillow cover and will now glue around the seam allowances on the neck and center front and the bottom seams of the sleeves. I also decided to glue a self-adhesive rhinestone band along the neckline for some extra glam. Now I just sew the sleeves finished sides in and will then sew the sleeve and side seams in one go like this finished sides in as well. Turned inside out, the jacket looks like this. And with that step it's also finished. The fur fabric and rhinestones make the simple design look so glamorous and I'm really happy how it turned out. It's also so so soft. Okay, let's make her some boots. I printed these shoe bases that Blue Pixie was so nice sculpting as well and will now place the foot on top of them to make a shoe cap. I'm taking some air dry foam clay and sculpt a little toe box on top of the foot connected to the shoe base. It doesn't need to be pretty or perfect because I'm going to cover it up later. I then let it dry and will now make the actual boot. I cut the pattern piece from this purple fur fabric and first glue around the upper seam allowance with my trusty Uhu glue. And then I fold the boot piece together and sew the back seam finished sides in. Turned inside out, it looks like this. Now I just need to put it on the doll leg and put it all the way over the shoe base. I glue it in place and trim off any excess if necessary. And then I take this little sew piece I cut from fake leather and cover up the bottom of the shoe with it. Last but not least, I'm taking this glitter hairspray that was already available in the 1990s and will now be spraying the boots with it to give them some glistening finish. The smell gave me a major throwback to my childhood when I loved to dress up for carnival. And with that, the boots are done and they're so pretty, don't you think? I also found this old fingering I got in the early 2000s in a magazine and attached a little chain to it so she can wear it as a belt. Alright, let's make her hair. I will be doing a partial reroute and partial wig. First I'm going to take this blonde jumbo braid hair and will straighten it with my iron at 140 degrees Celsius. After successfully doing so, I'm taking a super small strand of hair, hook it into my rerouting tool and carefully plug the tool into the head. Awesome! One hole done, just about one million more to go. After I successfully rooted the front line of the hair, I created this abomination of a bust and head to be able to glue the rest of the hair. I've prepared purple and blonde wefts and start by gluing wefts to the back of the head first. I'm working layer by layer until half of the back of the head is covered and then just simply fill the rest up with blonde hair. As you can see, I already separated the bangs and cut them a bit shorter. I styled the hair from the front into a ponytail and will now give her two bubble pigtails on each side. I put one clear hair tie first and place a second one underneath and then just pull the hair like this into a little bubble. I do this to the rest of the hair and also style away the bangs so I can wrap the hair into cling film to start with a face. It's easier to cut the bangs in the very end. Speaking of it, pretty much the last thing missing now is the face. Oh boy, this is gonna be a challenge. As always, I'm starting by giving her some glittery powdering first. Then I'm taking my favorite pinks and add some blushing to the cheeks. I first wanted to go with blushing on the lips, but I realized that it would look better if I line the lips in pink, so I did that. Looks really good! Then I'm taking my brown pencil and try to sketch out her eyes first. For some reason I had such a hard time to give her an eye shape that I was satisfied with and I needed around two hours to figure out the shape that I was happy with. It seems I'm a bit out of practice working on such fashion dolls. Oops. 
I wanted to draw her in my own style, but still make her look like a brat doll, and that was really challenging. In the end, I got so frustrated that I drew the main shape off cam. This looks good so far, but now I have to mirror this to the other side. No! Two more hours and a bunch of swearing later, I got it and can finally start to color the face. I'm using some matte black acrylic paint and a small nail art detail brush to draw the lines as sharp as I can. Wow, it's actually starting to take shape! To take a break from the eyes, I'm now going in with some pink paint on the lips before filling in the other eye. And then it's time for the fun part! Painting those silver ornaments, yes! I'm taking my beloved liquid silver paint for this and carefully start filling in the ornaments. This was just super soothing to do and I really enjoyed this part. Some nose highlighting with some iridescent micro glitter also can't be missing. Last but not least, I'm adding some eyeshines to the iris to give them some glow. This one is one of my favorite parts to do. I used white and pink acrylic paint for that. Almost done! Just some gloss is missing. I usually coat the lips three times with Liquitex high gloss varnish for a perfect lip gloss look. And how about some glam for the face? Here I'm adding some rhinestones and a tiny little nose piercing, because why not I guess, right? Perfect! With that, the face is done! To match the skin tone of her face, I realized I had to blush her body a little as well, so I sprayed it with MSC and added some orange and pink tones to give it a nice shading. Look at that difference! Now only one teeny tiny little thing I wanted to still make were some flowers for her hair. I'm just taking these lilac flower beads and add a purple rhinestone into the middle of them. And here they are installed on the finished hair. I think they really complete the look. I also gave her some earrings by just using jump rings for jewelry making. Alright guys, this was the last thing. We are finally done with the doll. And here's my Dana doll all done. I never thought that I would be digging the Y2K look so, so much, but she looks so iconic. And it makes me kind of want to have fluffy boots again as well. Please also make sure to check out Etelan's video. Also, thanks again to all of my patrons for the ongoing support. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful creative day. Bye! Everything. Swipe. <laughs> As if we were the. We would have. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good, in good enough in English for this.